Welcome to our uh, latest Virtual Bridge session, and I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Scott from Ayrshire College, who's giving us insight to his movie nights. Now, I have, I have no idea what to expect, but like, I'm hoping for a movie at the very least. So, Richard, tell us more. Hello, everyone. Um, so, as Kenji said, I'm Richard Scott. I work at Ayrshire College in the Creative Media Department and um, I am a film lecturer and a, what I'm going to talk to you about today was a project we came up with during the early days of lockdown called Movie Nights and it was really just a way of keeping students engaged and getting them using Microsoft Teams and also killing time. I'm not going to lie, I was just really bored in the house and I missed watching movies and talking about them with students. So we set about arranging uh, Movie Nights online. Um, as we'll go on to explain it, it's funny because I'm talking about it as an educational tool in some way, I guess, at, on this platform. It wasn't designed to be educational. Uh, the most educational it got was that there was some trivia involved in it where I'd say, oh, such and such, this happened to on the set or, or things like that. It wasn't like a traditional film class or film study screening. It was really just about garnering um, what we call social capital, which is a big thing in our department, um, which I'll... I'll talk to you about during the presentation. So am I okay to share the screen now, Kenji? Can I do that? Is yep, that absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Look at that, I've learned the shortcuts and everything. We're off. Brilliant. Okay. Um, okay, can everyone see okay? Yeah, okay, right. Okay, so um, welcome. Thank you very much. I like the thumbs up. It's great. Very positive. Makes me reassure, reassures me, keeps me going. Um, okay, so this is a the movie night's presentation. Now, I wasn't really sure what would be of interest to people. So what I've done and is just basically explain the story of what we did, what apps we used, um, and the impact and effect it had uh, from our point of view. Um, if anyone's got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them at the, at the end. So let's get this over with. Let's get I mean, that doesn't sound as positive as it should. Let's get going. <laughs> okay, right. So um, most people have fond memories from childhood of watching movies with friends. I'm sure we can all remember certain screenings, be it a cinema, a sleepovers, school events. But those sort of classic films you watched when you were younger... And as you get older, you often come to realize that it wasn't the movies, but the shared experience that made those nights great. That's kind of what we've got the warmth for. Um, and this is a presentation that is about our attempt to recreate that atmosphere in a digital world. Um, we'll cover our department, um, which is the Ayrshire College Media Department. We've also rebranded ourselves as ACTV. Um, the purpose movie nights served, the applications we used, the results that we garnered. <laughs> <laughs> and our plans for the future. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, I promise to be as quick and painless as possible. Um, so just a little bit of background on our department. Uh, my colleague, John Ray, and myself have ran the Ayrshire College Media Department for the last four years. In that time, we've seen a decent improvement of a uh, student retention, academic attainment, and application figures. Uh, we've also grown the department with two new members of staff and a brand new course at Level 5 called Social Media and Content Creation, which I'm personally super excited about. Um, maybe I can come, if this isn't a complete disaster, Kenji, maybe I can go back next year and talk about that because um, that's something we're really looking forward to. It's uh, basically embracing the idea of new media and digital marketing is, marketing is a real job. Actually, I'm going off track. I'm just talking about that. Back again. Bring myself back. <laughs> um, this, a, a, this growth has been possible due to our focus on teamwork, community and social capital. Um, so good couple of years ago now, five, five or six years ago, we had a class on the HNC media a, and they were nice people and they were academically capable, but the class failed to function as a group. If people know what I mean, it's kind of like um, everyone was very much their own individual. Um, and when it came to teamwork, which is a hugely important thing in the media department, it always fell apart. And it wasn't necessarily because they were falling out. It was just that they didn't focus as a group. And that really caught my interest and I started looking into it a little bit and I found this book called Bowling Alone by Robert D. Putman and he was explaining the the idea of social capital, the idea that you build a network um, of people in order to uh, keep society running and so we started looking at our classes like a little society um, and we've made changes to the department on that basis. It seems so long ago now, it's quite funny to talk about it, but this is a philosophy, it's basically underlined everything we do in our department. Um, we're all about community and teamwork. It's a huge part of it, a part of what we do. And a lot of people talk about our technical uh, things that we do and the sort of wizardry of that kind of stuff that sometimes seems impressive to people. To be honest, 
the success we've had is all comes from just engaging with people and, and looking at a thing socially. So, sorry, I'm going off track, track again. Um, ACTV is what we branded ourselves as as part of that in order to sort of build the idea of an identity and a culture. So we could say you are ACTV. Um, and a, we also do other things as well. So I've got some pictures here of some of the things that we do. So the first thing is we do a Christmas special every year. We hijack the UWS studio up the road from us. Um, and we make a Christmas special, which we always try to make as awful as possible. Um, this year's was an art wrestling competition. <laughs> um, and the, the middle picture is our, a, our Smash Brothers tournament, um, which we run every single year a, since the new Smash, uh, Smash Brothers came out for Nintendo Switch, um, a, where we um, see who is the best at, uh, at Smash Brothers. And then the final thing is, um, <laughs> this is our end of year show. A, Basically, um, again, about identity and culture and trying to get people to feel like one entity. At the end of your show, we have the Creative Arts has a, a, a massive a show within, this, a, within the college where the artwork's up on the walls, the VizCom guys are doing their thing and the media department do their thing. But we decided to take it a step forward or from our point of view. Some people would probably call it a step backwards. But uh, we started saying, well, everyone has to wear a Hawaiian shirt and we have a Hawaiian party afterwards. And that's something that we've developed. Now, is it educational? Absolutely not. Does it foster a sort of team spirit and, and, and a sort of sense of belonging? I think it does. So anyway, getting off track again, sorry. Um, this is about our attempt to try and bring that online. Long story short, try, trying to bring that sort of sense of community, that kind of idea that we invest in people. We do things that don't always seem like they're, they're educational. Um, we have a sort of, we take elements of fraternity culture. We use nicknames a lot in, in their department and things like that to try and, and make things tick. And for the most part, it works, I think. Um, okay, so a, all of this changes, obviously, is the impact of COVID-19. For, so for us, like most lecturers, COVID-19 was a substantial, had a substantial impact. A, we were faced with not already altering and adjusting multiple assignments, but we also had genuine concerns about how we could adopt a delivery for a virtual environment. Um, for us, the most pressing issues of those early days were maintaining lines of communication. I'm sure we all know, if you're a lecturer, that if you start losing communication, students can drop off the math pretty fast and it becomes difficult to get them back. So we wanted to maintain that. We also wanted to encourage engagement with online systems, mainly Microsoft Teams, which we were switching to last minute at a rate of knots. And then filling the void until guidance was available from the SQA. There was that little bit of downtime where people were working out what was going on. And we wanted something to do in that space of time to encourage the students to continue engagement uh, with us as lecturers and as a department at a college. So we started thinking about ways to address these issues uh, um, and without overcooking it, because the worst case scenario for me was me trying to deliver lessons online digitally, which I'd never done before on Microsoft Teams, which I didn't know how to use. So I was like, how can I get us all using this um, without actually doing much work <laughs> and this is kind of what we came up with. Um, so movie nights is a fairly simple concept. Uh, uh, the idea is to create a uh, movie nights using readily accessible technology applica and applications that most students will have access to. Rather than screening the movie online, which would have presented us with a number of technical challenges and legal issues, uh, we decided it would be best if we synchronized the screenings. This meant that we could use Microsoft Teams to chat while the movie played independently on another screen. So basically what we did is um, we said, we're watching this movie and then we'd get into a Microsoft Teams chat and add to our countdown uh, very dramatically. And on one, everyone pushes play. So the movie's synced up and then we can chat while it's playing. That's, that's kind of the idea of it. Um, so that was the, the simple concept. Now, it seems really simple looking back, but at the time it felt like a bit of an advancement in some way, shape or form. There was lots of issues as well for our, our lots of challenges with figuring out how to get it to work in a, a really succinct way. Because one of the things we didn't want to happen was technology to be a barrier and such. We didn't want to have to deal with technological issues. So we tried to keep everything as simple as possible. Um, Picking movies and ensuring access. So the immediate issues we were faced with were how to pick movies being screened and how to maintain access for as many people as possible. And um, despite limiting our selections, we decided to make Netflix the central archive from which we'd pick movies. We felt it was a relatively safe bet that the majority of students would have access to Netflix. Um, it's all very well me saying we're screening Masters of the Universe by Dolph Lund eh, with Dolph Lundgren, that kind of films, but if people don't have access to that film, if they've got to go then go and buy it online, or some people have got the DVD and some people have got it digitally, it, it becomes more of a problem. So 
the way we looked at it was it was like going to the video shop. Netflix became a, a digital video shop for us where they might not have everything you want. Some things might be out already, but there's a selection there and you're just going to have to make do. Um, so that's the way we went. Uh, over time, our criteria slightly evolved. So the film must be, the, this was the criteria, the film must be available on Netflix. The film must be available to rent on Amazon Prime. Uh, the film must be visually driven. So no comedy or anything talking because the main reason being that we're going to talk right over the top of this. As I'll come on to discuss later on, the film ultimately isn't that important. It's a social lubricant for what you're doing in the chat where you're um, engaging with people. And, and stay away from the classics or anything cinematic. Uh, this was not to be a classroom. So we were really looking at, it's hard to describe the kind of film <laughs> that we were picking, but we were, we were looking for things that were like late night classics or classic 80s movies that you would watch with friends or early 90s movies. Things that people just like chatting about and not necessarily that have got this great academic pedigree. Nothing by Stanley Kubrick. Um, okay, so uh, once we decided and thought about how we were going to do it, uh, we had to start spreading the word. Now, this is somewhere where we were quite lucky. Uh, by this stage, the college had been closed for a week, and so lens of communi communication had already been substantially weakened. Uh, luckily for us, ACTV has a substantial footprint on social media. So we used our Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube to communicate with our students and showcase a, uh, sorry, we use Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube to communicate with our students and showcase their work. This is something we maintain daily to ensure social engagement. Um, social media comes in for a lot of criticism, uh, but without it, this project could never have ran. And I think probably through this period of time that we've all been going through, I think we've all seen the benefits of social media and how it can be used for positive and not just to rant about things that we don't like. Um, also, I'd be amiss here if I didn't say like and subscribe. If you've got some time, check out these spaces and like and subscribe. I've got to get those follower counts up. Never stop hustling. Um, okay, so a make personal materials. This, in a way, is the main thing that I want to talk to you about because this was about garnering the sense of a texture or a reality to movie nights rather than just sitting in a sort of cold video chat. Most of the sort of atmosphere was built and before we, the, actual, the students turned up and it was about creating again, the sense of nostalgia. So we made a branded material. So uh, we wanted to play up the experience element of movie nights. This was quite a challenge when you consider people are ultimately sitting at home watching a movie they could watch at any time. Uh, we also had to balance that desire with the time constraints we were working under. I couldn't really say to my boss, sorry, I, I can't do this today. I'm working on showing a movie at night and I'm making some posters. Uh, so we had to be able to work quickly. And to that end, all Movie Nights promotional materials were made on an iPhone X using four apps. Uh, I'm a big fan of mobile phone filmmaking. I think it's an incredible technology. Um, and so I was already familiar with most of these things. Uh, so I'm just going to talk you through them. And some of them I'm sure you'll be familiar with. And some of them will have alternatives on Android, I am sure. Um, so the first one that was important was Documents. A uh, Documents is a file management a uh, system and document hub uh, for iPhone. Key features include uh, its ability to download YouTube videos and store them on your iPhone. This is something that used to be really tricky to do on an iPhone, but Documents makes it super simple. And what this did was it allowed us to download the trailers to the films and also clips that we wanted. Um, so we could start altering them and adding the Movie Nights logo and begin that branding process. It's a really great app, well worth checking out. Second one, which I saw somebody had done a presentation on previously, which is Adobe Spark. I love this software. It's so useful. Um, it's a simple online mobile design app. Uh, the key feature for us with Spark was that it could edit text and alter images ever so slightly. We used Spark to develop the aes -esque logo for Movie Nights. And uh, we also made text layers, which, which had transparent backgrounds, which we could then add to the videos through... Luma Touch. <laughs> so Luma Touch is one of the best uh, is one of the best non-linear editing apps available for your iPhone. I absolutely love this software as well. It's like um, Premiere on your phone. It's incredible. Uh, key features: you can edit on multiple channels, add audio, add motion, and change aspect ratios. We used Luma Fusion to combine the various assets we'd gathered and export the final files for different platforms. So we made a uh, a, a nine by 16 one for a Instagram stories, a one by one for the regular Instagram, a traditional aspect ratio, two to one for um, Twitter, so on and so forth. And then this is, again, might seem a bit like a nonsense, like most things that I do, um, but it did have some a uh, purpose. There's an app called Film, which is a filter app. 
Um, and film lets you add light leaks, dust, grain, and other film-like effects to your video clips. After we exported the final ads, we used this app to make them look retro and make them look old-fashioned. And this was due not just to aesthetics. Like, I love things that look like that. I've still got a VHS collection and things of that sort. But it wasn't just about the aesthetic. It was really about... I'd read online a little while ago the importance of nostalgia when it comes to selling online. Because, again, that idea that the digital world can look cold at times. So we wanted to create that sort of sense of tact something tactile, something physical, to try and get across that this was going to be exciting and warm and, and really play on the student. <laughs> the students love a stranger things and try and pull a, a pro that in as well to try and get people on board. So that's kind of what we did. A, that was the kind of promotional side of things. And all the promotional materials a, that went out would be attendees were asked to email ACTV to express their interest. Um, email addresses were then gathered in and added to a scheduled meeting in Microsoft Teams, and then they were sent an email movie ticket uh, along with introductory comments about what film was being screened. So I would do a little research on the film before it was screened, and I would write a little introductory uh, document and send it out. I kind of nicked this idea from the GFT, and what I enjoyed about it was uh, the idea of talking about films like Jean-Claude Van Damme's Bloodsport at the GFT would never talk about, <laughs> but giving them this sort of treatment eh, was just sort of amusing to me. Um, so that's what we did. That was the process. And then we all met up in Microsoft Teams um, and watched the film together. Eh, and as I said earlier on, the film itself isn't that important. Very quickly, people stop watching um, and just start chatting. And you're occasionally using that to bump off of. So something funny happens on the screen, something interesting. And that gives you that way of communicating and talking about things amongst people who maybe um, who, who need that little bit of social lubrication in order to talk. And um, one of the funniest things to watch, uh, to see happen was some lecturers turned up the first week um, and they made up about 50% of our audience. And as it became clear we weren't actually watching the films and we're just sort of inanely talking about gibberish over the top of them, those numbers went down and student numbers went up. And I thought that was really, really interesting because lectures obviously turned up thinking I'm going to get some really good insights into Jean-Claude Van Damme's blood sport and that wasn't happening at all. And students came up and, went and turned up and went, oh, we're just going to talk nonsense and enjoy ourselves. And that's when, when word of mouth got out, that's when people started turning up in a, in a bigger numbers. Um, so after the screen, we'd always put out uh, another social media message thanking attendees for coming and announcing when the next screening would be. That's kind of something, again, took from the practical world. I like cinemas where um, the ushers say goodbye as you're leaving. That's, I used to work as an audience usher. And um, I always just loved that, that part of the experience. Um, this served as a great way to not only maintain excitement, but also generate feedback on how people found the experience. And I've, I've put some of the feedback in this, um, this presentation. The ones that, that I really like are the ones that sort of showed us we were on the right track, where ones like hey, Everybody Needs a Friend and Ernie Gibson's, which mentioned the idea of like good people and the, the idea of spending time with others online. Um, it's worth noting as well that a lot of these students hadn't met before until, or only seen each other briefly until they were in movie nights. Um, something that I'll go on to talk about in a little bit is the idea that alumni turned up. We had students from three years back turning up to movie nights and, and inter interacting with the current student set, which was really great to see. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the process in a nutshell, and we just went through it week after week after week. Um, the results, well, the results, um, the first screening was modestly attended, nine people, I think. I think this was due to a mixture of people being nervous about appearing on camera and possibly thinking it was going to be an educational event, um, which I think turned some of them off for some reason. Um, from that point on, though, after the first people came out of movie nights, the first students, we saw attendance rise quite dramatically. Um, I think we were up close to, I think it was 26 or 27 on the second night. Um, once people realized it was just watching a movie and chatting nonsense, students seemed to jump on board. I, I'll give you an exact quote. Um, somebody didn't turn up to the first one who I expected to be there, and, they, and then they turned up later and they said, I spoke to Ebony and she just said it's super weird, so I wanted to come and see it. <laughs> that was kind of it. <laughs> and that, that to me kind of sums it up. Um, by week three, we'd grown to such a degree uh, and created such a buzz uh, within our departments that we had to specify that only ACTV's current students and alumni could attend. So 
in principle, I had nothing against like bringing in students from other departments and things like that. But a key thing about ACTV and the way we operate is we kind of know our people. Um, and we've got students that we talk with quite comfortably in front of, and they talk comfortably in front of us. And I was very much aware that I didn't want to make other students uncomfortable. I didn't really want to change my, the way I talk and engage with them because we've got people we're not familiar with. So just because it was a little experiment, I decided to, to lock it down and say it was only alumni and our current students that, that could come, um, which is something that I don't know whether it was a good idea or a bad idea, but it just kept things safe, I guess. Uh, well, not as intentional, one of the most rewarding elements of Movie Nights was the alumni presence. So we had students who are at the RCS, Queen Margaret, uh, UWS, turning back up and interacting with us and our new students. And well, it doesn't bear us personally, some good stuff came out of that. So we've got a student, two students going to Queen Margaret this year. And one of our students who is stationed at Queen Margaret is now going to show them around when they arrive. That's something that came out of this. Um, similarly, we have a student who's passionate about radio and a Erin who runs the radio department at UWS or plays she's high up in the hierarchy I don't know what she does exactly and um, she's gonna get them in a uh, when when they start next next academic semester so um those are two little like stories about the sort of relationships that managed to form out of this sort of just bit of fun really um impact on our year a uh, well not everyone engaged a uh, the most important thing was we held the base together um, me and John often talk about this idea of the base or the hardcore, the people who are, are sort of a, always there, always on time, always positive, always engaged. And it's super important. We always feel to look after your base and to keep them engaged because they can help you later on when students start to drift. Other students that you would find difficult to get a hand, hand a, get hold of, they can get hold of. And believe me, I spent that social capital later on in the year. I was like, we're such and such, we're such and such. And we managed to make those connections. And part of that came out of establishing a good relationship eh, and doing a little bit extra eh, for movie nights. By the, the time the SQA guidance had came out, a larger part of the HNC and the NQ contingent were comfortable using Teams and appearing in online meetings. So that was also a benefit that came out of it. And the project garnered goodwill from students towards the media staff. Eh. Again, this is something that me and John are really big on in, in the physical world and in the digital world. So, for example, we eat lunch with our students in our classroom, uh, <laughs> which might seem a bit weird to people. But again, it's about showing them that we don't just want to get out. Uh, the minute we're finished a class and we sit in each other's classes, it, it's just something we do. And, I, and this was no different. I didn't want students thinking, oh, COVID's hit, he's out in his garden and he's forgotten about us. So this was something that we did in order to sort of show that we were still engaged, that we still wanted to be around them, we still wanted to do stuff. And I think that garnered a lot of goodwill towards students as well. We were figuring things out and getting getting stuff together in order to push forward um, with a, our plans. Okay, um, you'll be glad to know that's almost there, almost home dry. Um, despite calls for it to continue, a movie nights is currently on hiatus for no other reason than I'm totally knackered. Um, and we just need a bit of a break. Uh, we will bring the online screenings back in some form, although this will most likely be in a more serious capacity to do with our actual academic studies and stuff, in which case Stanley Kubrick will be invited to those ones. Um, well, Movie Nights was a digital project. Uh, myself and John are huge fans of using real world manifestations as a measure of a project's success. So with that said, our major sort of keep it on the down low because it's a quiet project at the moment. Um, as our main plan uh, as it stands is to book a venue and have a movie nights event in the real world. Uh, this will most likely consist of lots of 80s music. <laughs> that's that's kind of what it's going to be. And it will be for graduates mainly because they didn't get an end of year show this year um, to come along and just enjoy the idea that we did this thing and it was fun, essentially. And that you'll be glad to hear is that. Um, at the bottom of the screen, a I've put a little link to Movie Nights promo materials. So if you click on that, it goes to a folder where some of the materials we generated in order to advertise and show um, the project uh, are contained. So you can have a watch of them if you want. And I can't underestimate how important that step was and giving it a bit of an identity and giving it a bit of a brand. Me and John put a lot of stock in, in that sort of concept of branding yourself and saying, this is like a gang or a gang's the wrong word. That's going to sound bad. This is like a team <laughs> and we've got a team identity. So yeah, I guess that's us. Um, I'm willing to answer any questions you may have, I think. <laughs> I... Okay, uh, Richard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 
I've never looked at Van Damme in quite the same way, but <laughs> we do have time for um, uh, some, some, some questions. So does anyone have a, a, a question for Richard? I have a lot, but <laughs> you could just unmute yourself and, and ask if you wish. Um, um, one of my, hi, this is uh, Roz Walker from Stirling University. Um, I was wondering how you made sure you were all synchronized. Did, did you all just go ready, steady, go and press a button or something? Uh, yes, that, that, that was the, the really complex process we did. I did a countdown. What we actually ended up doing is I made the countdown slightly longer each time we did it. So by the end, we were up at like 50 seconds. That was like one of the jokes we did where it would just get constantly longer and longer. But yeah, it was just a countdown and then everyone pressed play. Again, it doesn't really matter if they're slightly out of sync. The main, the main point is that there's something there that you can bounce off, off against. So the only thing I would say is this, these are top tips. Make sure they turn the volume relatively low and they're sitting a little bit away from the screen that they're watching on. And also put the subtitles on. The subtitles are super important because that's going to allow you to follow what's going on without, um, without having to hear every single thing. Um, and there's some moments it's really interesting because most of the stuff, it, like I say, it's only background noise really effectively and little, little switch. But there was one or two moments during... Um, Certain films where everyone suddenly focuses on the screen, a never-ending story when the horse dies, suddenly everyone got very, very quiet, very, very emotional. It was, <laughs> I was like, I picked the wrong film, we've gone the wrong way. <laughs> and it was suddenly everyone was focusing and things like that. A little bit of synchronicity is good, but really it's just a, a countdown is absolutely fine. And like, you want it near and near and near enough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Hi, um, this Hello. is Sean. Hi, this is Charlotte Attis from West Lothian College. Uh, I think it's a fantastic idea and I love the idea of um, creating social capital. I think that's something I'm going to go away and think about. Um, when you were using Teams, were you doing video chats? And I... Yes, yeah. uh, we did video chats. Now, if I was to do the process again, I would probably use Zoom, to be honest with you. But um, mm -hmm. we just started out. Uh, and we were trying to get them on Microsoft Teams. So yes, we did video chat. So myself and John were mainly on the screen. We did a lot of the talking. What I found really interesting, I didn't mention this because I thought, I don't really know why I found it so interesting is some people turned up, didn't say anything, just sat there. Like uh, maybe not even have their, their image on the screen, but I think, I don't know because I've not questioned them on it. <laughs> uh, but I think the reason was that maybe it was just a bit of company and just to hear voices, mm -hmm. but they didn't necessarily feel comfortable interacting. So that was a really nice thing if that's what was happening. I don't 100% know, but that's what I think it was. Um, but there's some people more confident than others and they would chat away, uh, just like with me and John and others would just stay relatively quiet and maybe chip in the odd thing. Um, there was one of the interesting ones is Ebony's comment on the feedback. Ebony's quite a quiet girl and when she came in and we're all being really loud and noisy as we usually are, um, I sort of usually lead the charge on that. <laughs> I thought, I don't know if she's enjoyed this. Like I, did, I didn't know if it had gone well because I thought I'm worried because she was so, so quiet. Um, but then it turned out she absolutely loved it and became one of the biggest sort of advocates for people trying to get people to come to it. And that was incredible to see. You just don't know what people are taking away from it and, and why they're engaging and what they're, what they're enjoying about it. Um, all I knew was that we were trying to create that atmosphere you had with your friends when you were younger, where you watched something and you just enjoyed spending time together. And that was kind yeah. of the, the idea. Yeah. No okay, so um, we, we're just coming to the end of our 30 minutes for the recorded part of the session. So the conversation will continue. And, and, and hopefully if you're watching this as a recording, you'll find time to maybe come and join us at a future virtual bridge session. But until then, I hope um, you stay safe. And I just want to say thank you for everyone joining us today. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. Thank you.